Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mike, thanks, and thank you all for coming out. It's um, great to see you all here. I'm seeing friends and former neighbors and former colleagues. It's just, uh, just a real thrill. This is actually my first time to do this. The book, uh, the release date was just actually yesterday, and last night um, was the first time that I was at a public event. Uh, the National Press Club uh, was having its book fair, and I was uh, there. I, I, I've been a member of the Press Club for a little over 30 years now, and um, so it was really an honor to to be there on the very day that the book was uh, released. I'm just going to, rather than read from the book, just uh, tell a few stories. Uh, and I'm going to start uh, with uh, a, a, an event that happened uh, in early September of 2009. It was in uh, uh, Montclair, New Jersey. And I had been invited by Senate, uh, Congressman Bill Pasquel to uh, uh, speak at his town hall meeting. And you probably remember uh, that during the uh, uh, August recess, uh, which extended up until Labor Day of, uh, of last year. There were a series of town hall meetings that mostly Democrats were holding throughout the country, and the idea was to have forums and discussions about health care reform in particular. Um, but what was happening is that most of these were actually being disrupted, uh, and they were not really attempts for people to come to get information as to express a point of view. And that was certainly what was happening in, at Montclair State University at, uh, on September the 3rd, 2009. More than 1,000 people had crammed into the auditorium of the university. And uh, on one side, there were people who were clearly opposed to health care reform, and on the other side were advocates of reform. And both sides had made sure that they had um, plenty of people there. And, uh, and this was something that I had heard about, I'd read about this, but I'd never experienced anything quite like it. Uh, and during the, uh, the town hall meeting, uh, it was very hard for any of us to speak to be heard. Uh, the, uh, the, there was a great deal of heckling of the speakers, and uh, when somebody would say anything that the, the opponents of health care didn't like, they would, they would heckle. And, and it was just, just uh, almost impossible to be heard. And I was trying in my remarks to just explain to people how, uh, how opinions are shaped, how uh, corporate uh, corporations spend so much money, and how, so effect how they are so effective in being able to manipulate public opinion with the sole purpose of influencing public policy. Um, and. Um, um, I finally got my remarks uh, uh, done, and, and uh, the, at the end of the, uh, the town hall, a woman came up with me, to me, and she was carrying a sign that said, Tort Reform Now. So I knew uh, just by the sign she was carrying that she was no fan of health care reform, uh, because uh, th those who have been opposed to health care reform have said that, well, all we have to do is pass some uh, tort reform, and then that's basically what we will need to make all things right with our health care system. Um, and she came up to me and very confrontationally said, no one paid me to be here. And I said, ma'am, I know no one paid you to be here. You didn't get a thin dime to be here tonight, but a lot of money was spent to get you here. A lot of money went into making sure that, that uh, you were believing a certain set of uh, some information that made you want to take action and to get here tonight. Uh, and um, I want to go back now two years before that uh, to kind of put this in context and set the stage. Uh, and I was still working in the health insurance industry. I was still working at Cigna as, a, as head of communications at Cigna. And it was just before the movie Sicko was to have its US premiere. And it already had premiered at the, the Cannes Film Festival in France. Uh, and uh, we had gotten some early reports about what was in the movie because uh, America's health insurance plans, the uh, big uh, uh, trade Association for Health Insurers had sent uh, a young staffer over to France, to the to south of France, to uh, go and see the movie. They had arranged through some of their connections to get a ticket for this uh, young man to sit in the, the back of the, the theater and take notes. And uh, uh, as soon as the movie was over, he snuck out of the hotel, out of the, the theater, and went back to his hotel to make a call back to the states to to let us know what was in the movie and and uh, exactly what it was all about and. We were hoping that it might be a, a movie about the pharmaceutical industry, but as you know, our worst fears were confirmed that it was largely about the health insurance industry. Um, the U.S. premiere was going to be a few weeks after that. It's going to be in June of uh, 2009. Uh, so AHIP had arranged to have um, uh, 
the heads of communications come to Philadelphia. My boss, uh, Ed Hanway, was uh, at that time chairman of the uh, chairman of Cigna, but he's also chair of the of AHIP's Strategic Communications Committee, and he wanted to to have the meeting there and it's on his home turf. So uh, the the PR people from all over the country, from the biggest health uh, uh, insurance companies uh, uh, all over the country, WellPoint, United, uh, 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 Humana. Uh, Health, uh, health net. So they all came, and plus Blue Cross and Blue Shield plans, came to uh, Philadelphia to begin uh, to be briefed on the plan, the the the, health, the the communications plan that AHIP had developed to attack the movie and to, to, to destroy uh, Michael Moore's credibility. And the the reason that the industry was so afraid of Michael Moore's movie was was borne out with the research findings that. Uh, Bill McInturf uh, gave us during that meeting. And Bill McInturf is with Public Opinion Strategies, and he's been a pollster for the health insurance industry for many, many years. And uh, as a, he's a Republican pollster as well. He had been tracking public opinion uh, really from even before the Clinton years. And he was telling us that for the first time since he had been tracking public opinion, uh, the, uh, the, the, the American population, more than half of the, the American population, was so disgusted with the private health insurance industry that uh, for the first time they were amenable to much greater government control of, and government involvement in, in health care. Uh, and that alarmed the chief executives of, uh, of the big companies and uh, the industry had hired a big Washington-based PR firm, APCO Worldwide, to develop a strategy to uh, uh, discredit Michael Moore and in, and in particular to discredit what was in the movie because if you saw the movie it was about uh, health systems around the world and how they do such a much better job of, of taking care of their citizens and all of the developed countries around the world uh, have managed through one way or another uh, to cover all of their citizens. They have universal coverage. In this country at that time, uh, 46 million Americans were uninsured. That has now risen to well over 50 million. Uh, and a big reason for that is because of our health insurance structure here. Uh, the insurance companies make money by getting rid of risk and I, uh, uh, and, and directly contributing to the rising number of people who are uninsured and uh, more recently to the rising number of people who are also underinsured. Uh, I'm telling this story because that was when the stage was set to uh, not only attack the movie but to lay the groundwork for what would be uh, an assault on health care reform. The industry knew that uh, uh, this movie would, would possibly begin to change public opinion or turn it even more against the health insurance industry. So it's very important to try to discredit the movie. And uh, at one point the, uh, the folks from AHIP and, and APCO Worldwide said that uh, uh, if it looked like the movie was going to be uh, changing the collective conscience of the, of the country, then, then they would have to push Michael Moore off a cliff, uh, which they didn't mean it figuratively, uh, uh, literally, but figuratively, that they would do all they could do to, to make sure that uh, that movie was discredited. Um, at the end of, the, uh, uh, of that briefing, uh, uh, we were left with uh, a set of instructions, and a few days later we, were, we got a, a binder uh, of talking points that we were all to use to begin discrediting, uh, in particular, um, the uh, single-payer systems around the, and around the world. Uh, and to use the expression um, uh, government-run health care and government takeover of the health care system. So those were, uh, that was the beginning of the use of those terms, which you might have, you probably heard more recently during the campaign. Uh, and uh, uh, they, they, the industry is very, very successful in working with political candidates and with uh, third-party allies. They've worked many years with uh, uh, groups like the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and the National Federation of Independent Business, uh, as well as uh, 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 political candidates and they've political candidates and they've also set up uh, front groups and have engaged in what is referred to as astroturf, uh, to uh, astroturfing to influence public opinion. One of the things that uh, uh, APCO and AHIP did that they told us about at that meeting in Philadelphia uh, was that they had created this front group called Healthcare America. Uh, and the sole purpose for creating that was to begin to uh, uh, 
uh, turn the tide of opinion away from reform and to scare people uh, uh, into thinking that uh, the government, a uh, government involvement in, in the health care more than it already was involved would lead us down the slippery slope towards socialism.